26 miles off the coast of Southern California lies the magic island of Santa Catalina. The island's best known landmark is Avalon Town with its beautiful harbor and world famous casino. Toward the west end of Catalina is the Isthmus with its snug two harbors, offering safe anchorage for numerous small boats from the mainland, as do many of the coves on the island. Our story begins in one of these Catalina coves with a man and his dog, a Sheltie, the popular name for the Shetland Sheepdog. His papers read Champion Berkey of Scalloway, and he belonged to Mark Mason, a business executive and sportsman. Shut up, boy. Bring it here. Bring it. There was a close bond between these two. Shelties are deeply devoted to their masters. Mark Mason admired his little dog's eagerness and intelligence. Come here now. These wild goats stirred a herding instinct deep within Berkey. Shelleys had originally been bred on the Shetland Islands to ten flocks of sheep. Berkey, come here, boy. Come on over here now. Though kennel raised and show dog trained, Berkey still wanted to go after those goats. No, no, no. Come on. Berkey. You'd never get close enough to them. Berkey boy, you're better off with me. Come on, let's go. Come on, Berkey. Mason had to return to the mainland for an important business meeting. The brief holiday together was just about over. A few minutes later, Mark Mason settled down in the forward cabin to do some work, though the champion Shelby was still on his mind. He wished he had more time to spend with Berkey, but his busy schedule prevented it. The Shetland Sheepdog had something on his mind, too. Taking the dog with Mason, the skipper got underway. Sheldy's first instinct was to follow his master as best he could. Shetland sheepdogs were bred to have strong legs and feet in order to follow flocks over slippery stretches of rocks. But Berkey was a show dog, a tenderfoot in the wilderness, desperately trying to catch up to his master. He was about to find out how rough the going could be on Catalina's cliffs and rocky shores. Until the cruiser was far out into the channel that the dog was discovered missing. A change of course was ordered. Berkey was beginning to tire, but he continued his search. He was far down the coast by the time the cruiser made it back to the cove. Mark Mason desperately hoped the dog had gone overboard near the island and had made it to shore, but there was no sign of it. The longer he looked, the more discouraged he became. After checking a number of coves, Mason decided to report the dog missing and reluctantly head for home. Forced inland by the steep Catalina cliffs along the shoreline, the footsore Shelby continued his search. As Berkey looked down at the Isthmus community, he sensed that this was the kind of place where he might be able to find his master. Actually, the cruiser and Mark Mason were just entering the Isthmus Harbor. Though Berkey had not seen the boat, he was driven on by his great need to find his master. 
Here's a picture of him. I'm afraid he might... Mark was about convinced that Berkey had been lost at sea. But he wanted to do all he could in case the dog had somehow survived. like the local inhabitants were trying to tell the stranger something. The Shelby didn't understand that the friendly Doxy was aware that there was trouble ahead. It so happened that the name of the meanest dog in town was Trouble. Berkey was no coward, but show dogs are trained not to fight. Shelby was looking for a hideout where he could catch his breath. The hideout seemed to be a dead end. <laughs> Having run into trouble many times himself, Friendly Doxy knew his way in and out of every hiding place at the Isthmus. The Shelley took time for a brief thank you to his rescuer and then hurried on to look for his master. Though his manners were good, unfortunately, his timing was bad. Berkey had missed the boat. This time, Mark Mason was definitely on his way, but the Shelley didn't know that and refused to give up. He continued along the coast, hoping his master would put into shore again. It was late in the day when the worn-out Sheldy was finally forced to stop for the coming night. Champion Berkey of Scalloway was tired and hungry. A city dog cast away on a desert island completely on his own for the first time in his life. It was now the next morning, and the Sheldy was getting hungry. Always before, his breakfast had been served to him in a dish. Having to find food on his own was a brand new experience. Berkey's nose told him there was something to eat inside these mussel shells, but nothing told him how to pry them loose. He didn't know anything about crabs either, but his instinct advised that if it moved, it probably could be eaten. cleverly that the inexperienced hunter soon gave up. Berkey had no idea how octopus would taste, but was hungry enough to take a chance. Maybe 
Berkey wasn't that hungry after all. This big, tough-looking kelp bass didn't seem very appetizing either. Berkey wasn't too unhappy when this fish became the really big one that got away. Though Berkey had been able to catch a mackerel, he wasn't at all sure what to do with it and headed inland to figure things out. Up to now, the Sheldy's seafood had always been cooked for him. What to do with a raw fish was a mystery, but he was about to meet a crafty creature who'd be happy to help him solve it, a Catalina fox. Berkey was willing to share, but once again, the Tenderfoot's good manners were about to get him into trouble. Sensitive Shelty was learning the hard way about the laws of the wilderness. It was just over the next ridge where Berkey saw some woolly creatures that kind of had him buffaloed at first. Originally brought to Catalina in the 1920s for a motion picture, there were now over 400 American bison on the island. The Shelty couldn't resist his guard dog instinct for herding, even though the buffalo outweighed him about 100 to 1. one scaled down more to Sheldy's size. It was hard to tell just who was doing the herding. came back on his own. Berkey didn't feel at all welcome to the buffalo's home on the Catalina Range. It was several hours later when the Sheldy came to Catalina's famous Arabian horse farm, El Rancho Escondido. To Berkey, it was just another place in which to look for his master and perhaps to find food. He'd never had any experience with horses and wasn't aware that El Escondido Arabians had won trophies the world over. The Shelly arrived at the main corral just as ranch manager Sam Hawkins brought in a handsome stallion. Sam was proud of Avalon Boy, a very valuable but high-strung Arabian with more spirit than horse sense. The Shelly seemed to recognize a fellow thoroughbred. The stallion was a real challenge for the little dog's persistent desire to do some herding. There was one major problem to overcome, however. Avalon Boy had absolutely no love for dogs. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Rancho Escondido had suddenly lost its charm for the bruised and discouraged Shelby. Berkey kept on the move and gradually worked the stiffness out of his injured leg. But the going became difficult as the evening mist moved in. Though lonely and hungry, the Shelley was about ready to call it a day. Catalina had the same rugged beauty as the Shetland Islands of Berkey's ancestors, but for the little dog, it was a lonesome, unfriendly place. It was early the next morning when the Shelley resumed his travels. Driven on by the vague hope of finding his master and by his growing hunger, he arrived on a ridge overlooking the other ranch on the island. For the famished dog, the reservoir, fields, and buildings of Catalina's middle ranch meant just one thing, a place to find something to eat. And so it was that when the Shelly finally arrived at Middle Ranch, he was half-starved in a muddy-looking mess. As it turned out, the brood pen just happened to have another visitor that morning, a deadly one. chicks too and so Berkey met Bud Parker and a whole new way of life began for the Shelby Bud was the assistant manager of Middle Ranch for the Santa Catalina Island Company you like that huh the young rancher had a special way with animals and Berkey obviously enjoyed being washed and groomed again Attention, aren't you? You're a pretty good looking little guy, you know it. You're a Sheltie, I bet. From the way you take to this grooming, you must be some kind of a show dog. Hey, listen, as long as you're in the talkative mood, what's your name? I'd say there's a lot of Scotland in you, so I'll just call you Mac, okay? Champion Berkey of Scalloway. Now, also known as Mac. Bud introduced the Shelby to the local animals, including a llama that had been given to the ranch some time ago. These animals were on display for busloads of visitors to the island. A real rookie around a ranch yard, the Shelby was kind of a tourist himself. dog accompanied his new master as Bud Parker carried out his various duties for the Santa Catalina Island Company. Bud enjoyed having Mac around, but he realized the Shelly must have belonged to someone else in the past and just might never completely accept him as his master. And Bud was right, for there were often reminders of Mark Mason for Berkey. Though Bud was kind and gentle with him, the Shelley's devotion to Mason was still strong. What's the matter, boy, huh? What's the matter? Mm -hmm. 
Come on, Max. Much of Bud's work concerned the wild pigs and goats on the island. The Sheltie tried to help, but most of the time just watched. Untrained Sheltie, a sunbathing sea lion with some strange kind of wild pig that also ought to be rounded up. The sea lion wasn't too worried about the dog, but wanted to get back into the ocean where he felt more at home. The inexperienced Sheltie followed him toward the dangerous rocky surf, getting farther and farther away from Bud. Okay, in you go. Okay, Mac, let's go. time to leave. He was aware of something that the landlubber dog wasn't. The tide was coming in. By the time Bud had located the Sheltie, the tide had closed in. If there'd been any question about the way the Sheldie felt toward his new master, there was no doubt about it now. Bud was the man in his life, for sure. In the days that followed, the two were closer than ever. But Bud still didn't realize that the Sheldie could be a big help to him in his work. Berkey, however, was learning quickly on his own. He got to know most of the animals in the ranch pens, and each day made his rounds to see that all of them were where they were supposed to be.
for everything and everything in its place. But wait, something was missing. Sure enough, three strays, a real job to do. Bud was quite surprised when he realized the little dog was bringing in the strays all on his own. Hey, boy. Here, Mac. Come here, boy. Good dog. Yeah. You're quite a herd dog, Mac. Come on. We'll try you on something bigger. From that moment on, Bud and the Sheldy worked together at Middle Ranch as a happy and efficient team. help and training, the Shelley was soon working for his new master with all the intelligence and eagerness inherent in his breed. the Sheldy a few tricks that weren't exactly part of a good herd dog's regular chores, but they did make life easier for the young rancher, and Mac always seemed to enjoy being useful. kept busy trying to control the population and grazing habits of the wild goats on Catalina. The goats multiplied rapidly, and 
damaged topsoil with their close cropping of grasses. He would thin out the herds by capturing and transporting some of the animals to other parts of the island or to the mainland. The Shelley had been trained to help him. It was now that the hand signals Bud had taught Mac really paid off. Whenever Bud had accumulated enough goats and pigs, he would take some of them into Avalon for shipment off the island. arrangements at the freight office to ship the animals over town, as the islanders call the mainland. A young visitor to Catalina had never seen goats and pigs this close. The youngster wasn't trying to make trouble, just trying to make friends by sharing his ice cream cone. Roundup was about to begin. The casino was off limits for the nanny and her kid. Bud checked out one part of town, while the Shelly was ready to round up anything with four legs on Front Street. <laughs> the island security patrol had gotten word that Avalon had been invaded. <laughs> Deputy Martin handled a variety of problems every day, but a wild goat on the Avalon Pier was something new. was greatly relieved when the last of the strays were finally rounded up. However, his pleasure was not shared by everyone. <laughs> Deputy Martin had asked Bud to stop by security headquarters. When he saw the Shelby, the officer had remembered receiving a missing dog notice some time ago from the Isthmus. 
the unhappy Bud could see that the description in the report fit Mac in every detail. Oh, hi, Bob. I've got a report him, Bud. I wonder if this Mason fellow would uh, sell him. Kind of doubt it. That's a pretty big reward he's offering. He must really like this little guy. That makes two of us. You keep him, bud. At least until we hear from Mason. Hey, great. And thanks. Let's go, Mac. The trip to town had brought nothing but trouble. In the days that followed, Bud tried not to think about losing his partner. A stickler for good manners, the little thoroughbred expected to hear a thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. Let's eat, Mac. life went on much the same at Middle Ranch. But then the day came that Bud had been dreading. It began on a mountaintop in the middle of the island at Catalina's Airport in the Sky. Deputy Martin was there to meet Mark Mason. It had been great news from Mark that a Shelby had been found on the island. He had high hopes that it was his Berkey. Arrangements had been made for Mason to be taken to Middle Ranch, where the unhappy Bud was trying to make the Shelby look his best, even though he'd probably have to part with it. Say, hey, Bud, Avalon boy got loose. I'm afraid he might hurt himself. Would you give me a hand? You bet, Sam. Gotta bring Mac along, maybe he can help us. Sure. Let's go, Mac. Sam Hawkins had been on business in Avalon. His foreman at El Rancho Escondido had phoned to tell him that the prize Arabian stallion had jumped a fence. That's my dog. Let's go. the ocean side of the island and a high rocky point where the runaway stallion had managed to get himself into a very dangerous spot. stallion was being watched by a ranch hand who had tried to rope him, but had only spooked the horse farther out on the point. Afraid to get him, Sam. He's real skitty. Neither Sam nor Bud knew that the Shelly had already had a painful encounter with Avalon Boy. Sam, we can't get behind him, but Mac sure could. It's worth a try. Go ahead. I'll take him up as far as I can. Come on, boy, let's go. Mark Mason didn't know what the young rancher was doing with his dog, but he cared enough about animals to be concerned for the stallion. still 
still had no love for dogs, but there didn't seem to be any way that the horse could be approached from the ocean side of his perilous position by man or dog. Mac, old boy, from here on, it's up to you. Mark Mason was surprised to see his show dog doing this dangerous job, and considerably worried, too. Mason realized that there was a very close working relationship between the little Sheltie and the young rancher. He could hardly believe it was his Berkey. Berkey had managed to get the horse away from the edge of the cliff. Bud hoped now that Mac could lure him on down. well done by man and by dog a winning combination mark mason knew now that his sheldy had realized his heritage as a true working dog as well as being a champion in the show ring but he had two masters now and a difficult decision had to be made looks like we got a little problem here from the way you two work together you must have spent a lot of time with him don't have much choice max always ready to go to work Mac, huh? Mac. Mac Berkey, come here, boy. Any chance of buying him? Well, he's a champion, you know. Worth a lot of money. That's what I figured. But if you give me enough time, maybe I could pay it off gradually. How much time would you need to raise one dollar? Uh, I don't get it. Partners. You keep the sire here on Catalina. And I get the pups. I'd have a kennel of champions from this little guy. Do you mean it? In the days to come, Mark, his mainland master, would send a visitor to Berkey from over town. Bud, his island master, made her feel right at home. Champion Berkey of Scalloway became Mac Berkey of Catalina the little shepherd of the island, and father of champions.